My final conversation is with this young man who's lived both lives as a non-documented migrant and now documented. And I want to know what he went through as a non-documented migrant and whether it's worth it now that he is documented. Thank you very much for doing this. Okay, thank you very much too. All right, okay. So me and you had a lot of conversation earlier yeah. about your life abroad, Yeah. right? Before you were not documented. Yeah. What are some of the audios that you went through? Um, I'll start from when I, I was, I came in as a, a documented immigrant to how came I became a, a illegal immigrant yep. to how I became a, now a, a documented, documented immigrant. immigrant yep. I came here as a, a visitor on six months visa to come and join the British Army 2011. And then in course of the application, my visa was expiring. So the army asked me to apply for visa in extension and then come for my uh, final selection. So my host at the time asked me to give him my passport and the application fee at the time was 500 pounds. I gave him the money and my passport picture. Three days after he came to say my passport was lost and the money too was gone. So by the time I went to the Ghana High Commission to apply for a new passport, the army had written to me that the time they had given me had passed, okay. and by which time I became an illegal immigrant. Mm. Illegal, should I go home, should I stay? I had to worry about that a lot, and yeah. at the point I was about to buy my flight ticket, and then I contacted someone in London, and he said, oh, don't go home, come and stay with me come and work from there I will help and sort you out so I took it as a good idea mm. I moved to London started working in a warehouse very cold warehouse of a, a popular shop I wouldn't want to mention yeah. so I was working very hard because I, I just wanted to make it so but the catch of the whole thing was that the man said whatever money that I'll be earning he'll be saving the money for me yeah. and if I needed money I should ask him because he had helped me, I decided to accept the offer. So I was working long hours, eating just twice or once a day. Mm. Just to save money for... Just to save money for the papers. Yeah. And I start to work early, finish late. Anytime I'm off, I go to his house, clean the house, wash plates, take the kids to school, iron their clothes. I was doing everything for them mm. and then a year passed he never said anything another year came passed he never said anything so a friend of mine I confided in a friend and mm. that time I was just having a, two pairs of trousers one for church yeah. and one for work yeah. one pair of shoes there was even one day I was walking about and one kid saw me uh, uh, uncle why do you always wear one cloth wow the boy was about five years old. Yeah. I was very shocked. So my friend and I, we went to speak to this man to speak sense into him that this guy has been to work and he uh, he looks as if he, yeah, uh, he's got nothing to show for it. Uh, he has a mental illness. So oh, wow. could you at least give him the money so that he will go home or could you just give him part of the money to set himself up? The man got angry. So don't worry. Come on Wednesday. Um, he will give me the money. I should come to his office with my friend or I should come alone. That Wednesday, I went to work and the immigration came to my workplace. Wow. Yeah. I was picked up. They said they, they had a hint that uh, somebody at the workplace was uh, illegal. So, and uh, I happened to be there and I was uh, picked up. So, do you have any reason to suspect I was the man who did it? Yes. I am very, 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 very so much convinced. So the man, after you, after taking your money, yes. decided to play that debt on you yeah. by calling. Yes. And the, it happens a lot to, yeah. yeah, a lot of people who are not documented, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I spent a night at the immigration uh, a detention. I was not having a passport because of the previous incident. Mm. So the immigration said, without a passport, they couldn't deport me. So I should go and come in to sign every every two weeks 
the long and short you got documented yeah. right so finally yeah. i got my stay one thing i want to ask is yeah the time that you were not documented yeah did it make you think that this journey was in vain did it did it make you regret migrating from africa yes to be honest i regretted um leaving home because yeah. back home it was bad but it was not like what i was experiencing at that time yeah. like i said earlier i was having just having two pairs of trousers mm -hmm. i couldn't speak to people yeah. i didn't even my only friend was my phone and that my friend that i met later yeah i had no social life mm -hmm. Because you're always work. hiding, always and, hiding. Yeah. immediately I hear a place siren. I, I, I am hiding. Sometimes I'll hear ambulance and I thought uh, it's a place siren. So yeah. yeah, it was tough. I regretted at those periods when I was uh, illegal. Yeah. yeah, It makes it difficult. Very difficult. Okay, so now you are documented yeah. and you can really do things that you really want to do. You, If you want to go to school, you can go to school. You're working fine now. Yeah. Does it make you feel okay now? Do you think now? It's worthwhile leaving Ghana. Yeah, it's a yes and no question mm -hmm. because um, when I look back, when I was in Ghana, I had certain things planned. When I was in Ghana, I always assess my life every year. What have I achieved? What is there more for me to do? But I think those uh, times I was illegal I took that from me. I couldn't assess my life because it was like I was just uh, stagnant. But now, when I look back at where I am now and the things I've been through, I think it is worth it. It, it is, is worth, worth it. it. Is worth it. Yeah. Two questions. Yeah. If you had, if you have, let's say you have a nephew who wants to travel abroad, what would be your advice to them? Um, my advice to them is, it is hard. It's not going to be easy. And two, if they have something going on for them in Ghana, if they have a job that pays them something that they could eat, they could find somewhere to sleep, could upgrade their uh, studies, either go and do masters or anything, they should just go that it is better. Mm. The final one, do you think you will ever go to Ghana permanent? <laughs> Ghana permanently? Yeah. Looking back, I'm... The, the first time I went to Ghana after all, all this was after 10 years of staying here. When I went back, I didn't want to come back. Mm -hmm. But I think I may not want to move to Ghana permanently again. Okay. Because Ghana, there is a lot of injustice. That is what uh, breaks my heart a lot. Mm -hmm. And I can't do anything about it. So since I can't do anything about it, it's better I stay away from it. So. Stay away from it. That's, that's you know what, bro? Thank you very much, Thank you much. for doing this for me. Thank you very All much. Right.